Good morning. Praise the Lord. Good morning. You are listening to Contend for the Faith broadcast. This is your host, Evangelist Sabrina White. We are excited. This is another Lord's Day morning. It is such a blessing to be alive. Today, we're going to be talking about after baptism. After baptism. And the text will be Romans 6, 3 through 5. You know the drill. Get your pencil, your pad, your Bible, of course. And we're going to run scriptures. And it's going to be exciting. It's going to be um, informative. I do want you, and it's going to be soul saving. I want you to uh, invite people onto the broadcast. Give them the link. You can go online, KDIV 98.7 FM, Fayetteville, Arkansas. You can also listen online radio box, online radio box. You can hear this broadcast every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We do thank the Lord for many outreach church ministries. Pastor Joe White is my pastor. I thank the Lord for him. Praise the Lord, First Lady Donna White. Praise the Lord for all of your prayers. All of your prayers. This broadcast is reaching souls. This broadcast is changing lives. The notes that come from this broadcast, you can easily um, get in touch with me via Facebook or via YouTube. So this broadcast is is uh, is life changing because the word is life changing, and Jesus Himself is impossible to come and encounter Jesus without change. It is impossible to encounter Jesus without change. Having said that, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you in the precious name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. We thank you that we have been barred in heaven through fasting and praying, hallelujah, the last three days, seeking your mind, hearing your directions. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross for our sins. We thank you, Lord Jesus, you became the supreme sacrifice Thank you for the baptism in Jesus' name. So glad, hallelujah, that I left all my sins in the water. Hallelujah. And then you gave me a clear conscience. Hallelujah. How forgetting those things which are behind and now pressing forth to those things before. Thank you for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Changed my nature. Hallelujah. To the nature of Jesus Christ. Thank you, hallelujah, for the Holy Ghost residing on the inside. It's just not for me, Lord. Hallelujah. So many others have came this way and they are excited. They're joyful. They're, they're, they're happy that you chose them. Hallelujah. Even when they didn't want to be chosen, you called them anyway. And thankfully, they answered the call. Now, Father, we ask that you would touch right now in the name of Jesus Bring souls in. They can't come unless you draw them. Father, draw them in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, do what you do. Charge the atmosphere. The time is evil. The time is dark. And this is the right time for the church to come in, to draw souls into the kingdom of God. Send us this, send this broadcast where I cannot go. Hallelujah. Let someone hear that they have to be baptized in Jesus' name to unload that burden of sin, hallelujah, and that they have to be filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues in order to go back when you come. And we know that you're coming soon. In Jesus' name, give someone an understanding from what will be taught today. Father, open up understanding. Souls are needing you so bad. I give them a heart to repent and a heart to understand the word on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's jump right into the scriptures. We're going to be reading uh, Romans 6, 3 through 5. Know ye not that so many of you that were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Verse 4, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, like as like that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in should even we so we also I want to get that right so we also should walk in the newness of life verse 5 for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection that is so powerful hallelujah we thank the lord for the word talking about after baptism after baptism then what first of all let's recap 
or when I say recap, I want to just go over a few things with you that I've already spoken previously on several other broadcasts. So water baptism is being buried with Jesus in the likeness of his death and raising to walk in the newness of life. It is an expression of a believer, a believing heart, testifying their belief in the gospel of Jesus Christ that is has power unto salvation. What about Tizza symbolizes the need for our sins to be washed off. That's the purpose of being baptized in Jesus' name. Don't you want to get rid of those sins, that guilt, that those secrets, hallelujah, that's driving you into depression, that's that making you feel arrogant and making you feel like you don't need him because you have money. You don't need Jesus because everything has been answered in your life. Why would you need him? Well, you know, you have a, you still have the sin that you in, the, the sin that Adam put you in. So there's a sin situation that you need to be washed of your sins. You still, although you might not need, need this, you might not have worries for this, that, and the other, you cannot save yourself. So Jesus Christ instituted baptism. It represents the truth of that old person is gone and the new person has come. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. A rebirth, a washing away of that original sin, which means the sin that Adam put us in and the sin that, that we had committed ourselves. Uh, when we washed in the blood of Jesus, that purification, it purifies our soul. And it also the Holy Ghost comes and it, it, it cleanses our, the word, the word of God washes us and the Holy Ghost cleanses our conscience. Hallelujah. Baptism in the name of Jesus produces a regeneration, a rebirth. When one is baptized, Jesus instituted the baptism when he commissioned his disciples uh, in Acts, uh, before his ascension uh, in uh, Matthew, in Acts 1, 9, and 11. And the word ascension is Christ physically departing from the earth by raising, by rising up to heaven in the presence of the 11 apostles. You, if you read Acts 1, the first chapter, the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th verse, you can see the ascension. That's what it is. It's just rising up from heaven into the earth. Because he had completed his ministry. He had died. He did, he has completed his the death, burial, and resurrection. Everything, everything that man needed. When he said on the cross, it is finished. The, the, the salvation at that point has been finished. The gospel, the commission, he's commissioned his disciples. He's gone up because he has done all that he needed to do. Uh, he has implanted the gospel. He has, uh, the church of Pentecost, the church is about to start on the day of Pentecost. So all, everything has been done. So, he, um, so he's going back into, in, back into heaven. So what about this is a demonstration of our obedience to the Lord. It's a symbol to identify with his death, his burial, and resurrection. It is a public declaration of our promise to Jesus not to continue walking in sin. The form of baptism that was given in Matthew 28, go ye therefore and preach all nations, teaching, teaching them, uh, teach all nations, baptize them in the name. Notice that the name is singular there of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He did not command them to use uh, these words, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost as a form, but he commanded them to baptize in the name. His name is above every name, Acts 4 and 12. That's the name. The Titus, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost describe uh, describe Him, who, which is Jesus. And neither is there salvation in, in any other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. None other than in the name of Jesus. So Jesus is the name in which is the uh, plays the roles or the roles of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost which is revealed in the Godhead. And for those of you that are more astute in the word of God, you understand that by being baptized in Jesus' name, we honor the Godhead. So it's important for them to pronounce the name of Jesus over you to, to be remitted of your sins. Matthew 26, 28. He said, this blood is for the remission of sin. Hallelujah. What, what blood? His blood. That's why we use the name. That's the only 
thing that can remit your sins is the name of Jesus. Luke 24, uh, 45 and 47 records, just before his ascension, Jesus opened up his disciples' understanding. My prayer to you, to the Lord Jesus today, is that your, your uh, understanding will be open as I come before you through these scriptures and explaining to you the word of God more perfectly. I know you might have never heard this before, but this is the time when you begin to pray. The Lord is about to come back. It is urgent now. My plea is more urgent. It has always been urgent, but more and more and more is coming up on the earth. Hurricanes, monkeypox, you name it. The, the plea is the cry. It has become extremely urgent. We don't have no time to wonder now. Jesus said, I'm going to send the comforter in. The father is going to send the comforter in my name. This is so important. After a few days uh, of, uh, that the Lord had opened up the disciples' understanding, uh, uh, Paul preached, Peter uh, preached on the day of Pentecost. And uh, they asked, what must we do to be saved? Peter boldly told them, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. So I might say, well, he, uh, Peter told the Jews that. Well, if you read Acts the, Acts, the 10th chapter and the 48th verse, Cornelius was a Gentile, his whole entire house. Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. So the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, Ephesians 2.20, the apostles not only preached the baptism in Jesus' name, they practice it. They baptize converts, 3,000 souls, later 5,000 souls, all throughout Asia Minor, Rome, uh, Galatians, Ephesians, etc., Thessalonica, all throughout the known world at that time. Everyone at, at, baptized in the name of Jesus until the, the, until the Nicene Council came and they began to create the formula, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. How you know and I know that Satan always wants to confuse people's mind when it comes to Jesus. I want you to remember this thing. After being baptized in Jesus' name, wonderful blessings come to those who respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You receive remission of sin. I don't know no one that wants to just really just stay in their sin, just to stay there. I don't know no one that really say, well, there are some people that could say, I can care less. I'm going to die of something. I don't care about going to hell. But on their deathbed, when it comes to that time, you can see that they made a bad choice and they, they would, you can see the fear on them and they even confess how afraid they are. So a lot of people are saying this, but they really don't believe in a lot of things they say because they don't know how they're going to die. They don't know what approach. And the Lord sometimes, a lot of times actually, in his grace, in his mercy, he gives them another time, raise them off their sick bed, deliver them from addiction, bring them out the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the bad car accident, et cetera, et cetera, and give them another chance. And sometimes, many times, add more years to their lives to, to just to get them to repent. Jesus is a loving, faithful, awesome Savior. He, his desire is that you be saved. He don't want no one to be lost. So even in that, the Lord still show forth his mercy when people say, I don't want him. I don't want nothing to do with him. He died for the ungodly. He died for the unbelieving. When we were yet in our sins, he died. He died for the rapists. He died for the pedophiles. He died for those that hate him, his guts. He died. How That's to show you how much he loved humanity. So for you to say that or confess that, that does not intimidate him. He wants you saved. He wants, and if you just let him know, Lord, I am sorry. I confess, you know, you are Lord, you are Savior. I want to be saved. I want to go down in Jesus' name for the remission of my sin. Help me to grasp what uh, Sabrina White is teaching today. I want this. I, I want to be saved. 
So becoming, uh, once you, after baptism, you become an heir. <laughs> your hope is eternal life. Your hope is, your name is written down in the book of life. After baptism, you must make your call and election sure. Second Peter 1 and 10. After baptism, you must make sure uh, to be careful how you walk in this world. Titus said, you must, you know, uh, uh, walk circum. you must walk to save yourself. You must walk uh, in a holy walk. Uh, take on Jesus Christ, his lifestyle, his love, his kindness, his benevolence. Take on that and be faithful unto death. And, and the Lord himself said he'll give you the crown of life. So what is that, what is one to do after baptism that will ensure there was that you will remain faithful to the Lord? Well, after baptism, you have to receive the Holy Ghost. If you have you've been baptized in Jesus' name and have not received the Holy Ghost, that is not the completing of the new birth. And I'm talking about the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. It is so important to have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And then uh, that begin your walk with Christ there. And you start off on spiritual milk. You start off as a young babe. Jesus gives you time to grow. Also, that's a time when Satan strikes the hardest at the beginning of your walk with the Lord. He wants you to fail. First, he don't want you to come into the truth. And then once you come into the truth with whatever you had to go through to get there, he wants you to fail. He wants you to, he wants you back, in other words. So after baptism, Living holy, being filled with the Holy Ghost is so very important. So many people stop there and will not receive the baptism. We do thank the Lord for this broadcast. It's not for just new converts who just been baptized. It's for everyone. Studying the Word of God is going to help your walk with the Lord. That's for those that's been here for a while. Those for new converts, uh, longing for the Word. Hallelujah! Like an infant longing for the milk. Staying fervently in prayer. Staying in fellowship. Keep the assembly of like-minded believers. Hallelujah! In the church of the Lord. Going to church. Being a part of that collective. Hallelujah to the Lord. This is what helps save you. This is what secure your, your salvation in the Lord. To long for him. To love him. For this broadcast to be helpful for someone that's recently baptized. But not just for a new, a new Christian. It, this broadcast could be for backsliders. Can benefit from it also. If you're a backslider, have left Jesus. You must first, uh, you just repent and do your first love over again. Revelations 2 uh, and 4. And it says that it that uh, you must repent and do your, redo your first love. He told the church of Ephesus that. Well, this could be anyone. Truth be told, we all have left Jesus in one way or another or what at one time or another. Uh, there's several ways you can sin of remission, sin of permission. So there's several ways. And so we all need to confess daily. We need to repent daily so that arrogance, unbelieving, and pride and selfishness will not drive out the love uh, of Jesus that's in our heart, the obedience and the honor and the reverence of the truth of him that's in our heart. So don't make it complicated. If you have backslidden, just repent and return back to Jesus. We need Jesus help to keep us, to help us to love him. Yes, there are times we may love him when we feel good and happy, but most of the time we may either forget about him uh, and we might not even consider him. So this is why, very, this is why you must be filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit is a gift from the Father and it's extremely important. The Holy Ghost allows the Lord's love to constrain us. It motivates, the Holy Ghost motivates us. It compels us to love the Lord and to live for him. Living for the Lord means that we are determined to gain to respect him, to please him. We want to be well-pleasing in the eyes of Jesus. And we want to do those things that Jesus would have us to do. So the Holy Ghost, we're, we are under his direction. We are under the Holy Ghost leading. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. I'm talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost, abiding on the inside like on the day of Pentecost. It's guiding. The Holy Ghost guides you. He's there to guide you and lead you. And he's there to... to uh, help you satisfy 
and and satisfy the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Jesus' desires become uh, you are filled with His desires, and you are compelled to uh, do what He will have you to do in the kingdom of God. The love of Jesus constrain each of us. Hallelujah! Through the Word of God, it's good. You must study the Word. You must pray. So try to have a personal relationship without being with the Holy Ghost and seeking him uh, uh, through the word is trying to know Jesus after the flesh. Only the spirit know the deep things of God. Paul makes it plain in 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 16. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Now, you know, the spirit is the same thing as the Holy Ghost, same thing as the Holy Ghost, as the Holy Spirit. So God has revealed them to us by his spirit. So the spirit searches all things. The Holy Ghost search all things, even the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man. But the Spirit of God is so important to have the Holy Ghost. The love of Christ constrains us to love him because the because he controls our heart. The Holy Ghost now controls our hearts. We give up ourselves to him. And so in order to, when we aren't filled with the Holy Ghost, we sit back to our own selfishness, our own pride, our own arrogance. So that's why it's important. After you've been baptized to receive the Holy Ghost and contend for the faith, continue into the teaching and the love of Jesus Christ to please him and everything you do for him. Let it be done from love that Jesus teaches you to have. You've been listening to Contend for the Faith broadcast. This has been your host, Evangelist Sabrina White.